Hey, Erwan. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Hi, Markus. Good to see you again. Welcome to this live conversation as part of Virtual Design Festival's collaboration with the Danish brand Quadrat. And um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Erwan. First of all, where are you today? Where are you speaking from? I'm, I'm back in Paris. Uh, I've had a lockdown period, which is now, I mean, it seems so far away. Uh, you know, lockdown stopped in France uh, nearly a month and a half ago. But during the lockdown, I was out of Paris for a while. Uh, I've had a very strange and beautiful and, and scary time sometimes. Uh, but with my daughters and wife on the countryside, which was, uh, yeah, unexpected. And you're a designer. You work with your brother Ronan as part of the Burelex. Tell us a little bit about the, the design studio that you run with your brother. Well, now, for, for quite a while, I, I've been a young designer, but now I'm starting to be old, uh, meaning that uh, the studio now is nearly 25 uh, years old. Uh, if you take really the earliest uh, project. And, um, well, I believe uh, quite a lot of people know us on the design scene. Um, and, and one of the reasons is that, is that we've been practicing many different fields. Uh, for sure, furniture design has always been a kind of a core uh, part of our work, uh, but through it, we also have been accessing some, taking care of interiors sometimes, scenography, museum show, um, but also we've been engaging into more industrial design like for Samsung, for example. Uh, so we are, I would say, very happy because we have been very lucky to work with probably some of the more beautiful brand uh, I expected to work with, um, but this being said, I have to say I'm in a, a time in my life in which uh, I am uh, more and more adopting. Uh, it's strange. Uh, I'm less. Uh, I'm, I'm getting more and more uh, in a certain way in adopt. Is it the right design or not? Uh, I'm not. Um, um, so. In a certain way, I'm more stressed than I used to be. And I think <laughs> the studio is a little like this. And um, we're here today to talk about the shade, Quadrat shade that you designed for Quadrat. But first of all, tell us about the relationship you've had with the brand. You've designed several products for them going back many years. Well, it's, uh, I, um, I believe we met uh, Enders Viral, a CEO of Quadrat, uh, 25 years ago, more or less. Um, and uh, also something was quite nice because I believe we met him more or less when he started to be the CEO of his own family uh, own company. I mean, Quadrat is basically two family. And, um, and so in a certain way, we grew together, uh, like with some other brand, like for us, for sure, Vitra is a, is a, is a massive uh, I, I say massive because um, there is key people in my life, uh, Rolf Feldbaum, uh, Anders Byrell, um, many more I could I could tell, but they've been uh, I've been growing with them. Uh, they've been a kind of mentor. They've been um, and and they gave us many I would say opportunities. So for for Quadrat, we permanently work together. Uh, everything's been starting around the showroom in uh, in Stockholm uh, quite a while ago, in which we we made the North Style at the time, which was this kind of uh, um, kind of tile made out of textile from which you could build walls. Um, after we made some re ready-made curtain, we made some textile also. Uh, we've been doing some curtain recently, redoing some showrooms. Uh, we are also actually working on some more showrooms now. Um, and and on top of all this, um, um, I'm just having great time with all of them. They're, they're, they're very good people, so they are um, very, I would say, 
positive energy uh, for me. And, and what I've been uh, more and more understanding with uh, Quadrat, it, it will seem a little silly to say, but they are producing materials. They're not exactly produ producing end product. And for sure, as a material manufacturer, they have a huge responsibility to make it clean. Because if the material you start from is not, is not clean and well done, nothing clean will come out of it. And uh, I would say I respect a lot who they are and their ethics. Uh, I think they're doing things very nicely uh, with a great attitude, uh, but with also a great uh, performance. So you've prepared a presentation about your work and about the, the product, the Kavadrat Shea. Do you want to share your screen now and talk us through that? Well, I was kind of asked to prepare a presentation, so I did my best. Uh, I don't know what <laughs> to do, but yeah, I will be sharing my screen. Uh, uh, up here, you'll be here there for a minute. And now I'm going here. Do you see my picture, Marcus? Yes, that's perfect. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, at the end, first, uh, this is Quadrat uh, headquarters. Uh, and um, I believe it's quite important to understand that they, they come from a tiny town uh, in, um, in Denmark, uh, which is nearby Aarhus. And Aarhus is a second town in Denmark. And yet, they are surrounded by nature. Uh, it's, ne it's next to the sea. And um, yeah, I, I believe it's very important to understand that they, uh, as material producers, they try to uh, respect a lot uh, the nature of the thing, uh, to make things with great virgin material. And this is something that uh, uh, I always respect with them. Uh, something that, I've, that, I, that I know inside Quadrat is that when you enter in the catalog, um, there are many things there. Uh, some of them I like, some of them I don't like. But what I respect on top of each other is that they, they base many things on the construction uh, of the things. They're not applying some patterns. They're not applying things just to get fashionable. Uh, they make things with, uh, let's say, the deep root of uh, uh, weaving, knitting, and um, and on top of all this, me, I always had a patient for fabric. One of the first uh, uh, machine I've been buying was a stitching machine when I was 18 years old. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's a dreamland for me. Uh, here you see some, some picture of the more recent uh, showroom we've been doing for them in, um, in, um, in Copenhagen. Uh, and I just took this picture. Uh, this is milled aluminum. Um, it's very precise. It's very clean. Here you can see on the showroom, it's basically using glass and brick and aluminum. Uh, again, everything we do with Quadrat is just going up to the task of uh, making things uh, with uh, with a great respect of the resources that you are using and a real quality of the material, something that is not fake. Uh, I believe one is um, one of the more dangerous thing that we see in our world is we are more and more surrounded with material which are fake. Fake means that they try to pretend to be something else than what they are. And if we go on this way at some point, uh, we as citizens and people, we will be surrounded with materials that are not what they look. And at some point it will mean that we are blind. We no more understand the world around us. So every work we do with Quadrat, try to be very pure in a certain way. And for sure, behind shade. So what is shading? Shading is, is basically this very simple thing of laying textile in front of a window. So you could say it's curtain, it's blind, it's a number of things. And Quadrat Shade, and so, which is a newborn company, 
which is a link in between Quadrat and Colis, which is a company from the Netherlands. Uh, Quadrat Shade is mainly or oriented towards roller blinds. So you know that there's those blinds that will roll up on a tube and go up and down. And one of the main, I would say, target of those is just to help to have a better building. One of the thing is very simple, is for sure shading, uh, take uh, the amount of light from the outside. It's more easy to work with a computer. You have no glaring in the eyes and a number of things. But one of the other very important thing with the shading is that it is also creating one more layer in front of the window. And we know the window is a, a kind of um, uh, area in which there is a lot of uh, exchange with inside and outside. Lights coming in, heat coming in, or the other way, uh, heat coming out. And the shading is uh, very important uh, to be able to make a better building management in terms of resourcing uh, that you are using uh, for uh, air conditioning and things like this. So what we have now is, is really it's difficult to describe one product because there is not one product. It's more a very, I mean, very, it's a quite wide uh, offering of different solution to make sure that this can, in a certain way, complement the architecture, uh, fit where it needs to fit. And main of everything, uh, now is mostly focusing on a co collective building. It means that it can be used in the domestic area, but still we are looking for solution for wide uh, public building uh, in which uh, they come more and more covered with windows. Uh, so you need to find a solution uh, for this. Uh, so it's been, it's been a work about hardware. Uh, you see here some, some detail about it. It's uh, some hardware uh, which are made of aluminum, Zamac textile. Um, we try to make them very reduced looking in a certain way. Uh, but when I've been looking of what is existing in the area, um, honestly, there is a lot of incredible good technical solution around. But most of the time, they're just lacking what is to me a magic of fabric, which is a kind of a certain romance in the quality of the material. For sure, fabric is something that is you know, bringing a nice texture, transparency. Also, most of the time, fabric is made of multiple yarn. And those multiple yarn give a tiny information to your eyes. It means that it's not a kind of a flat surface. And a big part of the job was also to, up. Oh, I'll be back. A big part of the job was so to look for more interesting colors, more interesting texture, um, just making some shape and some detail uh, that are very discreet in a certain way, uh, but express a very nice character and try to uh, try to, to give to the light of the building, yeah, just a positive atmosphere. So, I believe it's in, it's in between being very driven by the needs, uh, by making a simple solution that has a number of uh, options uh, so that uh, you are creating some solution instead of problems, uh, but also that try to, uh, let's say, give some solution for the architect to giving maybe one of the final twists uh, to the building by slightly, yeah, shading and, and coloring. 
uh, I believe the number of hardware that's been designed, there is probably 200 parts. Uh, it's really a, a kind of very big Lego uh, that can be assembled in different ways. Uh, here there is this kind of, uh, it's funny because I just made this in in the plane. Uh, I, I just made this, yes, in the plane flying to, to Copenhagen uh, before the presentation to try to sum everything up. Um, So for sure, it's a number of uh, hardware, a number of color, um, a number of material, um, and a number of uh, transparency. Because for sure, one of the questions behind the shade is that, is it very transparent? Is it less transparent? Or does it get so, so opaque? So it's really about, it's, yesterday I was just looking in the, in um, in the bookshelf here, and there is this book from Lars Muller uh, about Bruno Munari called "Air Air Made Visible," <laughs> and somehow uh, I believe that uh, this work around the quadrat shade is a certain way is about the quality of of air around you. And I think I'm, I'm, I'm done for the very prepared presentation. Um, and and uh, I believe uh, many people can, can find, uh, yeah, uh, I would say, uh, give me a minute so that I'm going back here. Uh, many people can find, uh, let's say it's a full range uh, on the internet. It's, it's, kind of, it's kind of impossible to sum up. Well, it was a great presentation. You did your job very well. This is a, it's a very industrial product, isn't it? You talked about you designed a television before, but is the, the way you approach something like this completely different from the way you'd approach designing a chair or something like that? What was the, what's the process for doing a product that has so many components that have to function? Well, um, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not very different, but the big difference is that um, uh, I just want a good quality of light and air, and I don't want to somehow attract people with a tiny detail. And somehow, for sure, a chair, a chair is nearly like the body of a person. So uh, a chair, in a certain way, is... Uh, uh, really need to very strongly express a full character. Where is this leg? Is it thin? Is this eye? Uh, and and for sure, uh, you you kind of I believe behind a chair you always try to mimic a person. So somehow it's a kind of design that has a lot of um, uh, certain I would say um, um, iconic way. Uh, you always. In the, in the blind, it would have been ridiculous to do this. It's really here to complement the building. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just here to, to come as a last touch because in many cases, architects, they don't even have the choice. They really need it to deal with, uh, with a general climate control. Uh, so uh, we, we try to be as much clever as possible in a making things reduced, uh, simple, not using too much material. But it is true that one of the more important thing was also to really give some interesting taste uh, to the light and to the air uh, by working on the textile. And, and most of the time, the shade world is a little bit sad in which you find some gray tex textile or beige textile. Uh, and I, and I find people haven't been working uh, enough on, on more subtle coloring. And, and we made a lot of this uh, here. Uh, so I could say it's quite done to us. Um, it's, it's also like when we do also the, the showroom for quadrats, they're very expressive. 
but in a certain Danish way. I always tell them to Quadrat, you know, you are Protestant people from the North, you know, they don't, they don't want to, as they're very different from French or Italian Catholic, you know, they just want to be more, I would say, um, quiet and more down to, to things. Actually, we've had a, a question from somebody called Ulso um, saying, did you work on the textiles or did you take them from Quadrat's catalog? I think you, you helped to design the textiles, is that so, right? So, I mean, those textiles are very, very specialized uh, because they need to be stabilized and things like this. So um, Quadrat's uh, shade came from some, let's say, base of weaving on which then we've been coloring yarn uh, and making the color uh, out of it, which is, uh, it looks like a simple task, but it's very uh, special. So, because you need to, you need to define the color of a yarn, which is very different of defining the color of the textile. Because uh, if you take a very strong yellow yarn and mix it with something white, you might get something which is very whitish, but uh, just has a little bit of, let's say, lime uh, inside. Uh, so it's, um, it's uh, yeah, I mean, it's a process which I like a lot, which is uh, you order a lot and a lot of yarns, and then you weave them all together, and then you are uh, getting what they call um, a, color, uh, a color blanket, which is all the yarn uh, weaved all together. And here from, from the color blanket, you start to choose, uh, the, let's say, the tones. And sometimes it's very uh, particular to do because you get 20 white, for example. And then some of them are slightly warmer. Some of them are slightly colder. Some of them have, a, have in a certain way, a more flattened texture or something which is more in, in, in contrast, and it's a, yeah, it's a fine job to do, but uh, very pleasant, I have to say. And the fabric, it, how does it prevent heat getting into the building? It has a metallic structure or something in it. How does it actually well, work? I mean, there is, there is many things, but one of the first thing, it's simple, it's in front of the window. And you know, windows are insulated by a double glazing. Uh, and with air inside, I mean, not air, but gas. Somehow, just by bringing <coughs> the blind in front, you also kind of create a kind of, let's say, volume of air, which is creating slightly more insulation. But one of the big function of the blind is also to, uh, to deal with, with the light that come from the outside. And the light that is coming from the outside has also some effect on the heat. Uh, a lot of sun, for sure, the room is going up. Uh, I mean, the heat in the room is going up. Uh, and so, yeah, part of the quadrat shade environment, uh, there is Verosol, uh, which are, it's quite amazing because it's just applying a tiny, very, very thin layer of aluminum on the textile on the outside, and this is rejecting uh, sunlight. And it, it seems simple. Okay, put some aluminum, go for it. But at the end of the day, it's a very special process because it's a kind of gigantic tube in which you put the roll of fabric, you close it, you put everything under vacuum so there is no more air inside then you start to bring some massive aluminium inside which you're gonna melt and then you're gonna run the fabric and you melted the aluminium so high that it's becoming a gas and when the fabric is going on top of the aluminium the aluminium is just go up to the fabric and, and touch the fabric and uh, attach glue, whatever, I mean, stay there. But the fabric has to run super quickly because if it stayed too long on top of the aluminum, it would melt also. So it is typically where quadrat is super strong. It means that it seems simple, but to handle it properly to the best performance is quite something. And, and, and uh, 
to me, this is a magic that you can find inside uh, humanity. Some people have been thinking about things and they find it an amazing solution. What a light bulb can be. I mean, just eat uh, a piece of metal uh, inside vacuum of air. It seems so simple, but for sure it's so difficult to do. What do you prefer? Do you prefer like an expressive project, like a, a chair, like you were describing about it's a sculpture for the body or an, a kind of technical project like this? Do you have a preference between the two? Well, me, uh, uh, I, I, I like a lot to practice all those different domains uh, because they enrich uh, each other. And, um, and uh, I have to say, the Bullet Studio, we're quite curious in a way. Uh, and um, and uh, something, Bullet Studio, I believe you can really see a kind of common thread in between our projects. They don't look so, uh, they don't look so, you know, kind of spread out without any link in between them. Um, but at the same time, so they're made for very different domain. And, and the common thread, I've never seen it as a style. I don't think like people see a kind of bow like style or, uh, yeah. I mean, to me, practicing different domains is uh, uh, great. And I believe interesting pra practice. What is your process then when you first take on a, a project, any project, you do research, do you start sketching, do you go to the workshop? How, how do you approach a project? Well, um, more and more, I, I understand that the project is everything, meaning that uh, uh, one of the things that is nice in design is uh, design is made for manufacturing. Uh, and manufacturing is this kind of uh, magic of numbers, uh, you know, uh, when you organize a factory, you can repeat something uh, and, and somehow use less resource. And so, because you've been thinking or to repeat it very nicely. Uh, but then one of the condition of repeating means that there, there is always a need for a kind of uh, uh, flood. I mean, if the river stop, that's a big deal to start it again. Uh, that's a little bit what, what we've seen with the lockdown period in a certain way. We stop saying and to start them again is a big issue. So um, I more and more understand that uh, you need to make sure that um, uh, everything is, is, is a wall, you know, uh, that there is no mistake and everything is very coherent. So at the end, <coughs> I'm just obsessed by project. I think about them all the time. Uh, and, and something I, I understood a lot with design um, is um, uh, design is a process in which the more you advance in the project, uh, the less you should be doing and the more you should take out, which is a very different practice. I imagine that when, when you win a project with architecture, for example, then you have more and more to do. I mean, design everything, go adding some rooms, something like this. Design, when you've been putting the project on, then uh, the best thing you can do is try to think what you could remove. Uh, so part of it is needs a kind of slightly meditative pro uh, a process. And one of the way of meditating for myself is drawing, making mock-ups, keep on a permanent activity. And sometimes we redraw the same thing again and again and again. And it's just to find a way to spend time thinking. Uh, so um, um, it's not a very simple uh, answer to your question. Uh, I don't, I, I never know how to answer what is the way to uh, approach a project uh, at the end. How did you and Ronan start out then? Tell me the story of when you first became designers. What, what made you want to be a designer and how did you become one? 
So the story is very simple. He wanted to be a designer. Me, I never wanted to be a designer. Uh, uh, what I mean by this is uh, Ronan, when he was 15 years old, he had a very clear vision uh, of the thing. Uh, and I believe for him, uh, design was, was very clear in a certain way. We were both, uh, we've been learning, growing very, I mean, we come from a family background where there is no real access to art, architecture, or things like this. I mean, it doesn't mean that there were no access, but it was more like we don't have in our surroundings uh, some people that were practicing art in general. Um, and I believe when Ronan knew that he wanted to be someone doing things, uh, maybe design was a little bit more, more easy because behind design, there is a kind of... Uh, Social, social practice, you know, which is in a certain way very different from the contemporary art in which uh, families can be a certain way afraid of. Um. But me at this time, I've got five years different from Ronan, I'm younger. Uh, and, and, and when Ronan was in art school, me as a, as a, as a kid, I was listening a, a lot of indie music uh, I was uh, also studying mathematics. It's just at some point, I, I, me, I, I was attracted by by making things by my own, but I had no clue uh, where where I would go. And then I've been stepping into art school, uh, and super quickly, when I was with the art school, I've been I've been starting to help Rono. Uh, at this time, I was not with him. I was next to him to help, um, and very quickly uh, we just find out that we were we were nicely going up uh, together, uh, and it made my life very strange uh, because, for example, I believe I met Mr. Felbon, uh, so CEO of Vitra. I was 22 years old, uh, so it's very very young. It's very unexpected. Uh, and me, I had never been fully dreaming of this kind of person, uh, which made me very happy to be with them, but without being uh, feared uh, in a way. Uh, so that is the way everything started. We were the two of us, uh, yeah, uh, nearly 25 years ago. Now we're 12. Uh, we have an... We used to be in Paris suburbs, now we are downtown. And um, and both of us are getting white air now. We've got quite a few questions from readers or viewers. And one from James Bennett, who's asking about the ready-made curtain, which is another product, another curtain you designed yeah. for yeah. Um, Asking, what's, was the philosophy similar to the shade? I mean, it's a different product, isn't it, the, the curtain? But tell us about that one. Well, it was really the philosophy was to make things possible, uh, meaning that uh, uh, is uh, Enders from Quadrat came and say we need to find solution because I know so many people that wants to have curtain and that just don't do because it's too complicated, and and it's true. This is something I live for myself also. The number of things I need to fix in my home are. Hopeless, is, um, and and uh, you were just stating that, and it's true. For curtain, you need to buy a system, you need to buy some textile, you need to make some stitching, you need to make. And at the end, ready-made curtain was a kind of pack, uh, and in which, except attaching the screw on the wall, everything could be made by hand. Something, for example, that was. Fundamental for us is that you would never use a stitching machine. So you don't you can cut directly the textile. The textile is made in a way that it's not, you know, kind of a peeling uh, after the cut. Uh, so, so we use some kind of pegs that we design, and those pegs have some kind of uh, 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 tiny needle inside, so you could go through the fabric without having anything to do. And, and also the, the, the needle wouldn't damage the fabric if you reopen it again. The tension system, so ready-made curtain is a lot about 
you know, tensioning system, and there is quite many systems that are on this. But something that took quite a while to develop is we didn't want to use stainless steel cable. Why? It's not that we didn't like stainless steel cable. A stainless steel cable, you can't cut it. It's just impossible. I mean, if you don't have, uh, you know, the, the very strong cutter for stainless steel, you, you don't, you can't. So we've been using a very special cord made out of dinema, which is a, a, a kind of fiber that you use for boats, boat, racing boats, you know, that they can have a super heavy tension, but you can still cut it with a scissor. So ready-made curtain, if you look at what they are, nearly everything is a sign of its function and the sign of, of its simplicity. So what could be told in all this is, okay, it's giving the usual bullshit of the designer, make it simple, make it easy, and things like this. The only thing is that you can, you can still believe in this and give you those kind of rules when you design. It doesn't mean that you're gonna end up in a design uh, that is, I would say, simple or boring. It just needs to be in a certain way uh, creative in the process of making it. So the idea was to put everything into a box, make it simple. But I have to say, we didn't make it even simple enough. Um, and uh, it's not a, a huge success. I don't know why, but maybe the distribution is not big enough. But I still, I believe that even with this le level of simplicity, people, they don't make it. So I believe next time we should make a curtain system with a big tape and you're gonna tape it on the wall and it's gonna be finished. It's a joke, but it's not fully a joke uh, because one of the parameter which is very important for design is what can people do? And, and it's evolving permanently. And now we are able to uh, be on Instagram, make some very complicated stuff on Facebook. Me, I'm able to do some computer coding, but then uh, I'm a shit when it's about cutting properly a piece of wood with a end saw. So everything we are able to do is permanently evolving. And, and, and as soon as you ask uh, to the product to be made by people or assembled by people, you need to be very aware of what people can do. It's an interesting problem though that both the curtain and the shade address. We have this in our, our house. We have this beautiful big glass doors in the kitchen. But now in the summer it's, it gets so hot. It gets too hot in there. we yeah. could you could the shade be used in front of doors, do you think? Because we've been struggling to find something. From well the, it's um, I mean so the shades themselves uh, I mean they will belong very quickly to the modern house. Uh, I work a lot uh, uh, re recently, you know, on all this um, um, automatic house. You know, when you will enter back home and you will say, uh, house, please get up. And then everything will go on, air conditioning, lighting, uh, all those things. So the blind, uh, they're very, they, they can be very long. They fall down incredibly flat. Uh, they're very nice. They can be equipped either with mechanical system or with engine. They can be very automatic. So yeah, uh, I believe they can be a good uh, proposal. But it really depends of, um, let's say, who you are. I, I believe behind curtains, you know, curtains sliding like this, there is always a romance of a curtain, which is badly pleated, t touching the floor. Kids been playing with it. And the blinds is slightly more belong to a kind of, uh, let's say, more modern architecture. They're, they're very effective, but in a certain way, they're a little bit more straight. So I, I honestly believe it, it depends on the way you want to do. But what I'm sure is that um, uh, the blinds uh, for eat are, are incredibly effective when well chosen. I'm just going to ask a couple more questions from viewers. Uh, Antika Saini asks, how do you feel about the future of design? Um, I am, I am, um, 
I, I have a lot of questions for myself, which uh, I, I, I can't uh, I can't answer. Um, plus, with the lockdown period, the, 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 there will be a big economic shock for the design industry, uh, and and I'm not pretending to know what will happen. Uh, but if we if we just go out a little bit of the lockdown issue, uh, the more and more there is one question I have to myself, and maybe some people will will help me answering it. Is that if you ask to any de any designer what what one of the key value about design, most of the time one of the answer will be long lasting. People always say this: let's use a good material, make a good shape, and keep it forever, so that you would consume less. And this is what designers should be praying every night before going to bed. Uh, but I wonder more and more if, if this will always be relevant. Because also what I see in my life is that um, uh, we are moving all the time. Uh, we are, I mean, most of, the, uh, most of the standards behind furniture, they belong to the idea of the 70s you know, super well done forever. But at this time, you would, mar you would marry once you would stay in the same house. You wouldn't move as much as you do. Maybe you would give it to your children. Now we are in much more hectic life. And uh, I believe, I, I, I'm questioning myself, if is long lasting still possible? Shouldn't we find the other way, which is more uh, finding a very interesting short term? And for this, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm always surprised why IKEA is, is not taking it better. Uh, if I would be IKEA, for example, I would do something like when you buy something for 100 euro, I would propose as IKEA to say, give me 10 more. But then with this 10 more, you get a phone number and you can call me whenever you want and I will come, collect, retreat properly and do something else of what you do. And I'm taking the example of IKEA because we know that when you live in modern cities, you can't afford to lose square, square matter. Uh, you, you can't, I mean, it's too complicated, it's too expensive, it's, there is too much pressure. So yeah, I've got this big dilemma. Uh, is, it, is, it, is it still this old good value of uh, well done and forever? Um, is it right or is it a kind of dogma somehow that belongs to the past? Is, uh, I'm reading a lot of uh, science fiction um, and, and you know there is cy cyberpunk, cyberpunk uh, which is, are we entering in a kind of uh, glowy, dirty world but in which there is a lot of freedom or are we going to stay in a good taste and well done uh, things. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I don't know, uh, actually. So, so I, I always repeat to my, uh, to my daughters, I said, you know, we are orthodox. I say we are dogmatic uh, because at home they always say, could I buy this? And then I see an horrible pink shape and I say, oh, no, 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 no or they want to have something. And I find out how much I'm kind of creating some, some style and rules that doesn't have much meaning sometimes. So you see, I'm really in midlife uh, 40s crisis. Is that <laughs> and finally, this is the second half of this, uh, the same question from Ankita Saini. What would you suggest for upcoming designers? I mean, it's a very difficult time to be coming out of a design school what should they be doing? How can they get a career? How can they get some attention to themselves? And what kind of ideas and products and methodologies should they adopt? Well, something uh, I believe is that you should always try to produce something within the context where you are. Meaning that uh, the, big, the, the biggest mistake you can do is to try to do something for industry when you don't have the industry. Uh, because 
you're gonna try to think about the rule, but maybe you're gonna mimic them and it's gonna look ready, but it's never gonna fit. I believe one of the best things to do is to try to be clever within the context where you are. So if you are a student and you've got limited resource, try to produce something clever within this limited resource. Uh, so um, I believe making is really possible. Uh, the only thing is to be true uh, to, your, to your making. And, and then when people get to know you, you're meeting somebody, industrial people or whoever, the things that they want to understand the more is that are you clever within your context? They're not, they don't exactly want to take your design and reproduce it. They just want to understand if, if you are able to dialogue in a, in, a, in a, let's say, creative energy within a context. So making is possible, uh, but, but, but make within your context. And, and also, I believe more and more into the maker world, which I find interesting opportunities for sure. Brilliant. I think that's a great point to end on. Oh, um, thank you so much. You're welcome. I hope to see you uh, in the real world before too long. And say hello to Ronan. Yeah, I will. Ciao. Ciao to the design team and ciao to the audience. I don't know who's there, but thank you very much for attending. Bye. Bye.